Hello everyone, this is David Montgomery, published author. The name of my book is Redemption of David Montgomery. You can find it at Amazon.com, different bookstores like Books A Million, Barnes & Noble. You can Google it, you know, we use Google, big search engine. Um, and I'm sitting here doing an interview with So Exquisite Charleston, because Charleston is so exquisite because the Lord loves you. Okay, my name is David Montgomery. I'm from King Street Extension, a little neighborhood called Rosemount, South Carolina. And I have a book out in bookstores. It's titled Redemption of David Montgomery. It's dealing with me, some of the experiences that I've been through, I've experienced in my life. Um, I'm 32 years old now, so when the book took place, I was around 20 years old, 21 years old. And I was living a street life, doing a lot of crazy things, foolish things like promiscuity, selling drugs, you know, dealing with alcohol, clubs, but doing all kinds of things that the typical average black youth may do, or may be involved with, or may have someone close to them who may be involved with those things. So, how the book came to fruition? I was living that lifestyle for a good two to three years, heavy. And my ex-girlfriend, there was a point in time where we separated because I cheated on her. And I wanted her back, but I couldn't get her back. So she was like, nah, we can't be back together because I heard her. Broke our trust. And after all that took place, me with the begging and trying to get back with her, she telling me no and stuff like that. I was in my room, I remember Vividly, I was in my room crying and I turned to the Lord Jesus. You know, I'm a Christian. And I turned to the Lord Jesus, Son of God, and He changed my life. I called Him in my room. I, I, I asked Him for forgiveness. I told Him I was sorry for the life I was living. I put my trust in Him and He saved me. After He saved me, it was a new life for me. You know, He, he cleaned me up of all the dirty, wicked desires that I had inside of me, he cleaned me up. And I was living with him, which I'm still am living today, but I was living with him for maybe about two, three, four years before I decided to make the book. So the book is essentially dealing with my life before Jesus and my life after Jesus. The specific point in time that made me want to do the book isn't necessarily the date, but the, the thought, I thought to myself, you know, the life I was living, how many others living that life, how many others are living that life, so I wanted to do a book about it, I felt like the things that God was doing in my life, you know, he changed me, the miracles he was doing, I had to let it be known, so that's how the book came about, that's how the idea of the book came about, and the funny thing about it is that in high school, English was my favorite subject. You know, I really didn't like math, I didn't like social studies, history, I had no, I, I can't say I didn't like it, but I had no interest in it, as much as I did with English. So, all of it played a part, my upbringing, the people I dealt with, my school, the studies, all of it played a part in the, in the making of this book. Okay, uh... The next work I'm interested in doing, as far as the book, I have two, maybe three books, you know, in the making right now. My poetry book, because I, I also write poems, poetry, and also a book I have coming out for men, strictly for men, because, you know, I'm a fan of the Lord Jesus, and I study the Bible and His Word, and understand how men and women, we both have a significant part. In, in, in society, you know, in progression. Um, but it is my belief and opinion that um, the men, we, we, we are naturally born to lead our families, not to dictate, dominate, and in, in, uh, enslave females, but we're, we're, we're supposed to take care of and love on and me by example. So I have a book coming out strictly for men, just bring us back to where God wants us to be, you know, the God that I serve. He, he, he told me one of the most beautiful passages in the Bible. 
he created men in his image and likeness. So while we're out with all these different images trying to bombard us and lies trying to tell us that you're a man if you do this, you're a man if you have this, I just want to bring it back to the beginning to, to uh, share my experiences, my opinions, and that which the Lord has taught me dealing with men. So I have a book dealing with men, I have a book dealing with poetry, and I also have a book dealing with religion. Uh, Christianity, uh, a Christian's faith, dealing with how we can engage a culture, engage a society with the truth of the Lord God and His Son Jesus, and not be ambiguous, but concrete, and not just with doctrine, but with actions, with love, because that's what the Lord Jesus taught us to do, so I have those books in the making. Dealing with the process of making a book, uh, bringing your story, uh, having it manifested through book form, I feel like some of the most important elements is having your concept together, you know, knowing where you want to take it from point A to point Z, knowing where you're trying to go at with it. And for me personally, dealing with my book Redemption of David Montgomery, the story flowed, it just flowed out of me dealing with life experiences. So it's sort of like an autobiography, but I know every book isn't an autobiography, so I think some of the most important elements is dealing with where are you trying to go with it? You know, do you have a storyline, plot, and all that, and how are you trying to form it, you know, so it's... it's it depends. It depends on what the author is trying to write about, you know, uh, what kind of book is it going to be. Like the difference with my book that I have coming for the men and the book that I have out now is it's, it's autobiography. It's, it's like, you got definition check me on that too as well, but it's an autobiography. But the book for men, that's dealing with information. It's, it's more informative socially. But my book right now is more about me and the things I've been through. So it all depends when someone's trying to make a book. Just know what you're trying to do, where you're trying to take it, and be true to yourself. You know, like if you get into the mindset of trying to please your reader too much, in my opinion, it can take you away from, from the essence of what you're trying to do. So be true to yourself. Know what you're trying to do, put it down. And those people who can relate, they'll pick it up. Whether it's a million, whether it's a hundred, whether it's one person. Just be true to what you're trying to do, true to yourself. Okay, why I specifically chose to share my story through book four. Um, isn't so much why I chose that. Because I want to share it through every form that I possibly can but starting off with the book it's because you know like I said my favorite subject in high school is English so I'm, I'm I, I believe I'm decent when it comes down to speaking properly and communicating you know um, I wouldn't necessarily say properly but communicating in a more common way because everyone has their own way of communicating there's not just one type but um, dealing with the book form yeah, I feel like I communicate in a common manner, so I wanted to write it, I wanted to utilize and use that which I, I, I have, you know, I grew up with. I went to North Charleston High School, that was back in 96, and I went to Fort Chester High School. I graduated from Fort Chester. So I've been, you know, I'll say thoroughly taught, so that, that's why I wanted to do it in book form, because I felt like with the music, I was doing already with the music, with the CD. I was specified on certain things with the CD. But then with the book form, when we read, it's just something to me like, you exercise your brain when you read. You know, you could, and not, not to take away from music, but for me, if I listen to music, it's different than me reading a book. You know what I'm saying? I 
exercise my brain more. Because I can just listen to music and bow my head and never catch the message, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I'm pretty sure one can argue that can happen with a book as well. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to take all those avenues, the book form, the music, uh, we have a movie coming out. You know, I just want to take all those avenues and uh, dealing with the book. I didn't want to exclude the book. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's more than me just choosing the book. I think it's rather me not wanting to exclude a book form. Because like I said, I'm trying to go through every form I possibly can to represent my law. So. Uh, dealing with the music, um, I grew up listening to hip hop, uh, listening to yeah mainly hip hop, different forms of music as well, old school like Al Green and different people like that. You know my uncle them, they put them on. Too. Uh, but growing up listening to hip hop, you know being young, walking around and stuff like that. So. When I, when I gave my life over to, to the Lord Jesus, Son of God, Jesus, I still had, I still had a taste for hip hop, for music, you know, but I really didn't find any Christian rap, you know, it's like, the lifestyle that I live, I gravitate to when it comes to music. So, the, I was living for the Lord, so I really, I don't have an interest for listening to that, which goes against me. So, I didn't really hear any other music. I, I know now that it was out there, but I just didn't hear any at the time when I first gave my life over to the Lord Jesus, as far as Christian rap. So, I wanted to use my gifts, my talents, and you know, rap. Especially for those out there who are like me, who are saved, and who, who feel like they have no outlet, no no alternative to the music that's out now, to, to, to the main music that's out now, for the urban life. So I wanted to do some music for that reason as well. And the difference with the music and the book, uh, like I said, you can listen to the music all day long, you know, for me, it, don't, it doesn't take more of my uh, script, I guess, the script of my brain to listen to music because I'm just listening to it, although it's effective. But when I read a book, I feel like the more I read, the more I hunger to learn more. You know, we have plenty of books in the world, we have plenty of CDs in the world. So for me personally, my, my personal choice, my preference, I like I like reading books. I like to read books, and plus the Bible. I, I read the Bible because um, it's the it's the best book in my opinion. But I read the Bible, and from me reading the Bible, I understand the 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 power, the effects of reading the book. So I wanted to make the book as well as the CDs. We live in a society today <clears throat> that has opportunities to make money, to build a family. We have a lot of freedom, quote unquote, in comparison to other countries, you know. And that's a good thing. That's, that's actually a great thing. But also, on the flip side, we don't have just good in society. We have evil in society. Wickedness is going on. We see it on the news. You know, we see uh, the murders from the from the from the urban community type crimes to the higher community type crimes. Or not even higher, but just different communities. You know, the biggest thing is knowing who you are. You know, and knowing who your God is. Because as much as uh, today's society, and that doesn't include everyone when I say today's society, but the traps that set is to push you away from knowing God. I'll give us a prime example. We have plenty of music, even gospel music, 
You have plenty of movies, you know, gospel, uh, Christian type movies, or uh, different religion type movies. Now, when, when we think about what's happening today with media, with TV, with music, and billboards, advertisements, how many of it is pointing you to God? Now, one can argue and say, well, we don't want to have religion in the world like that because religion start wars. This is some of the stuff I've heard. Religion start wars. Okay. But I, I beg the difference. It's the lust of power and money, greed, that starts wars. More so than religion. Um, and that's my opinion. That's my humble opinion. At the end of the day, with that being said, we live in a society where you can choose which direction you want to go. It's been my personal experience that when you're with Jesus and his God, there is safety because he helps you to understand, for one, where you will be at forever. After you pass and even today, where you're going to be and where you are. And he helps us understand that we're not alone. It's, it's, it's easier to be discouraged, suicidal, uh, dysfunctional, depressed, when you feel like you have to make moves by yourself or when you feel like you're everything, you're it. So you have to do A, B, C, D to be successful. And if you're not successful, that's just it. There's no more to live. So God quenches that. He, he, he brings reality to where it's supposed to be. Because everyone has their own worldview within this world. But if our worldview consists of only I get this, I get that. If I don't get this, I don't get that. I'm a failure. What do I do? God is our backbone. His son Jesus is our life. Is our life. And I would say, just check within self. You know, if the if the gospel is hard to believe, if the Bible is hard to believe, check within self. Um, ask yourself, do you have a conscience? Uh, do you feel guilty about things? God doesn't want to condemn us, but that's grace and mercy because. If, if, if I've done something wrong against a person, I feel bad, I have to apologize to that person. Or I should if I'm a morally decent person. So God left us a path that we can walk down. But check within yourself. Because there are many different religions, there are many different false teachers, and people who are actually lying about the Bible and saying that it's corrupt and stuff like that. But the gospel is far more than just stuck within the pages of the Bible. It's, it's so real, it's so relevant that we can ask ourselves, okay, this concept of sin, if it's true, have I, have I fallen victim to? And when a person recognizes the reality and if they're honest with themselves, and if you're like me, a human being, I'm pretty sure we've fallen short of God's commandments. You know, some people don't want to call it sin. We we'll call it immorality or mistakes. It's a, ro a rose with a different name is still a rose. So I would tell a person, check within self and understand when you look around in this world, the clothes we have on it came from the earth. The buildings we have came from the earth. Every good thing we have came from the earth. To me, that points to the fact that there's a purpose. It was designed with a purpose to help us. So I look toward the creator of the purpose. So I would tell you, you know, just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of yourself, who you are. Seek God, read the Bible for yourself, you know. You come to determination, whether you want to believe in it or whether you don't want to believe in it. For me, I gave my life to Jesus, the Son of God. He's given me peace, he's given me hope, he's given me joy. He lets me know I'm not by myself, so I need I need not fear, I need not to be stressed, I need not to be depressed. If I have a dollar in my name, if I have a million in my name, at the end of the day, money can't buy peace, money can't buy joy, money can't buy security. 
we pay for ABT security, but even then, that doesn't guarantee that our things, our belongings can't get stolen. So if your life is dependent upon materialistic things and temporary things, I wouldn't say that's true living. I would say that's a better way of living. Uh, to my urban community, I would say with all the crimes that's going on, and not just limited to the urban community, but from where I'm from, I speak on first. With all the crimes that's going on and, and all the drama and all the, uh, the uh, chaos that some of the youth may be involved with, directly or indirectly, I would say slow down, you know? Think about where you are and why you're there. We have loving parents, you know, moms and dads and grandmas who, who, who have been struggling to put food on the table and stuff like that. And I feel it's important to not shame your family name, but to live a life that's, that's honoring who you are and honoring your family name instead of dying for your block, instead of selling drugs and getting caught up and locked up. And also to, to the suburban community as well, because I've dwelt in both places. I would say to the youth there, you know, understand that hip hop is a strong, strong product. You know, it's, 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 it can be good, it can be bad. But understand that the life that you live, I say the same for you. You have a family, you know, your family helped you out and struggle to put food on the table. And when I say struggle, not only struggling literally, but also nine to five, doing what you have to do, long hours, stuff like that. They did what they did for you. You know, don't don't dishonor your family name. You know, I'm, I'm from the old school, the older school. Well, we care about our family name and who we are, what we're doing, so it's very important. So at the end of the day, you know, know who you are, you know, read the Bible, Feel the Bible is the best pathway, the best GPS to understanding what true life is about. So that's that's what I've experienced, and that's what I would say to you.